we began our story in part one talking about the various factors that allow oxygen to dissolve into water from the atmosphere. Those include temperature and altitude because it affects the atmospheric pressure and finally salinity. Now let's talk about photosynthesis. We'll start by reintroducing our characters. Harry is our African viper shrimp. The rotor for Gabby is a small multicellular zooplankton and has led the discussions in low oxygen levels. Now here's Gabby talking about oxygen production. Oxygen is produced by a process called photosynthesis and this is done underwater by plants and algae and photosynthetic bacteria. Can't we fix low oxygen by just adding more plants to the water? Photosynthesis is a bit more complicated. This is a natural process. It just doesn't happen miraculously. Well, sort of it does, but there are requirements. There's sun, carbon dioxide for plants to breathe in, and of course the plants must have all the photosynthetic molecular machinery. Yeah, well, let's not get into any of that stuff, okay? Another day. What's important to remember is that oxygen is produced during photosynthesis and consumed during respiration and various decomposition. Reactions that take energy and oxygen to break down various different uh, organisms and products in the environment. And there's respiration too, in which animals have to consume oxygen to survive and metabolize, and that all takes energy. The consumers not only use up the oxygen, but they're also putting extra carbon into the environment. So luckily in the natural cycle, the producers need that carbon. Kind of cool, isn't it? Hmm. These are just natural cycling processes that happen in the waterways. And when carbon dioxide levels rise through respiration activities, while there's plenty of sunlight, that continues to drive more photosynthesis and therefore producing more oxygen. Mm -hmm. It's just when there's too I much see. photosynthetic algae building up and it gets really high, uh, that of course increases production of zooplankton zooplankton like us rotifers, and then there's a lot of extra organic mass and high numbers. Well, that all sounds kind of awesome, Gabby. But what do we shrimp do besides waving around these fascinating fan feeders and sucking up all that food? Being bottom dwellers, you sure do a great job of cleaning up the debris along the ocean floor. Sweet. Gabby, I really think you're making a mountain out of a molehill. Hmm. Well, there's constant interactions between sun, atmosphere, oxygen producers, carbon dioxide producers, and even extra nutrients that get dumped into the water, too. But we get into a problem when the scale gets tipped. When respiration events suck up and deplete the oxygen, and photosynthesis can't keep up. So once there's too much carbon building up and not enough oxygen, we end up getting into a really bad situation, which is known as eutrophication. Eutrophication? Eutrophication. This is really the last thing we have to talk about to understand the whole problem with dissolved oxygen levels dropping. A condition known as hypoxia. With eutrophication, the main culprit. I get it. Eutrophication can be caused naturally or unnaturally. And so this will include all the breakdown from bacteria and other decomposers, raw sewage, uh, industrial or agricultural runoff and the spilling of ex excess nitrogen and phosphorus into the water. And that kind of clogs up that whole recycling system going on. You see all that green algae building up? That looks bad. Now, wait a minute. You just said algae does photosynthesis and supplies the oxygen. Are you just trying to confuse me? Okay, well... Imagine you have so much organic mass that the waters get way darkened. Let's see what's happening. We know we have a lot of O2 uh, because you've got sun and because you've got a lot of photosynthetic um, happenings. And then in, in contrast to that, you've got all this consumption going on. And so we know we could have a normal balance and we know we can tip off and start producing too much CO2 and don't have enough oxygen. So what's happening now? So we have way too much algae shading out all the other plants. 
and there's a lot of decomposition of, of, of material building up and, and we're blocking sunlight from coming in. We're blocking the ability to do any more photosynthesis because the sunlight can't get in and that's really critical. And it's all being compounded by all of these other uh, nutrients dropping in. And so the mess kind of does really build up and it starts to really get worsened and worsened. Eventually, there is insufficient sunlight for photosynthesis to even occur at rates fast enough for life-sustaining oxygen. Ooh, that looks kind of creepy down there. Yes, Harry, and eventually you end up with a bunch of dead zones, like we see in the Gulf of Mexico. There are so many pollutants and runoffs into the water along the Gulf that the water conditions are unsustainable uh, to aquatic life because there just is too low of a dissolved oxygen level. And uh, even zooplankton, who normally can survive as low as 2 milligrams per liter, uh, are struggling to survive in this type of aquatic environment. Satellite images show murky areas where scientists are investigating to see if they can sustain life. I hope it happens soon. Or rather, what we can learn from these areas to help solve the problem in the future. Holy moly, that looks like a graveyard up there. Where there's no oxygen, fish cannot survive. No aerobic life can exist. Then what will we eat? Globally, there are over 400 dead zones along coastal areas caused primarily by those eutrophication conditions we talked about. Too much nitrogen and other, other types of pollutants falling into the rivers and storms flushing pollutants down from farms and cities onto the shore waters. On the other hand, the expansion of deep sea low oxygen zones is driven more by uh, the rising temperatures due to climate change. I'm feeling really, really sad. Well, let's just hope that humans will start protecting their waterways. We are all in this together. Do you remember the two ways that oxygen gets in the water from the atmosphere and from photosynthesis? And from the atmosphere that there's three main factors that help determine how much it can dissolve into the water? Let's just review them for a minute. When pressure goes down, then also the DO will be dropping down as well. Um, and But when temperature goes up, DO goes down, and when salinity goes up, then DO goes down. While all of that is happening, there's mixing and turbulence that will aerate the water through winds, through waves, through bubbling streams. And finally, photosynthesis, whenever possible, will be providing lots more oxygen by the producers in the water. That's it in a nutshell. Well, so now you kind of know why you're so tired, Harry. Well, that whole lecture sure made me an awful lot more tired. And you, Gabby, are you worried about rotifers getting overpopulated? Anything else us viper shrimp need to be worried about? Shrimp are a sensitive indicator species. Any copper spills are deadly to entire shrimp populations. Ammonia, different kinds of human drugs like antibiotics dumped into waterways. Rotifers are pretty adaptable, not picky like shrimp who have to worry about salinity, temperature, compounds in the water. Whaley whaley. Gab, aren't you just full of facts? I guess you're not so gabby now, are you? G'day, mates.